Good afternoon everyone. Well, someone asked to see inside my studio. Well, this is it. Um, nothing particularly impressive, as you can see. Um, quite a small bijou place. Um, but it's all you really need, you know. A lot of people say to me, well, you've got a studio, you've got all the best materials and all the rest of it. Well, look, that's pretty much it. Um, paint, pot, um, mixing tray, handful of colours. What have I got there? Three, three or four brushes. Um, everything you need to do, to, everything you need for um, producing a painting. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you my version of this lovely old Cotswold stone barn. I've produced the sketch um, and I'm going to show you how um, a quick and, well, basically a quick and easy way to paint this particular subject. Okay. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to paint the sky. I'm going to damp the paper nice and easily. Just large brush, large inch brush. Damp the paper. It's only Bockingford uh, paper. Quite a, a, a cheap um, type of paper. I'm just going to damp the sky, damping around the building at this stage. But other than that, just nicely damped, uh, just to allow the, p the water and well, mainly the paint to flow over the surface. And I'm going to damp the foreground as well. I'm going to leave the sheep white paper at this stage. And one other thing, the um, the the row of um, uh, stone wall either side of the opening there. Just going to pick around that, around the um, sheep, work my way down into the foreground, allowing that to soak in. So I've damped around the barn, around the um, foreground and around the sheep. So that's basically all you need uh, as a start. So it's just a large brush damping the paper. I've left the barn uh, dry the walls either side of the gate opening and the sheep themselves. Okay, well I'm going to use ultramarine, dig in there nice and deep. Ultramarine with a touch of red vermilion, just to give myself a like a rather dull sort of colour initially, just to give a sense of some cloud work. Now notice how the paint flows now it's onto damp paper. Quite easy, nothing too fussy. Now I'm going to drop in some raw sienna. See the way I'm just floating that raw sienna in, allowing that to dive around and fill in. There we are. We've got the beginning of a sky. Um, quite simple, nothing too fussy. Um, Going to put a little bit of red into that too, just to just to give it a bit of warmth. I mean, you know, skies should have a little bit of warmth in there. See yeah, how that's lovely vermilion colour. Bring that across the back and down into foreground. Now that I've got the paper at a bit of an angle, right, now I'm going to really start to get this warm tone. I'm going to add Prussian blue to that as well. So it's a, sorry, not a warm tone, a cooler colour. Prussian blue with the red again. And I'm looking really for some cloud like shapes. So it really is just given that sense that we do have clouds really running away and clouds actually appear smaller as they go away into the distance. So 
further away they are, the smaller they actually appear. And the running of the paper, of the paint, um, needs to be um, used, not mopped off. A lot of people mop colour away and, and all that business, but it really is um, quite important that you um, just go a bit deeper with the colour there. There you go. To try and get a sense of, of light coming from the left hand side, so most of the strong clouds will appear on the right. A little bit of cloud work there perhaps. A little bit underneath some of those shapes there. A little bit underneath there. Not too much in the distance. There we are. Just allow that to um, to shape up. There's no need to be too fussy with that at this stage. Cleaning the brush. Working my way down. Going to what a painting friend of mine said once, I'm just putting the soup on. So I'm going to use raw sienna because it, it's a Cotswold stone. I know the uh, it's quite weathered, but um, we really need, oh, I'm painting around the opening um, there, so we really need a bit of that old Cotswold stone sort of look to the whole thing. And um, that's what I would say. Bit of red, bit of yellow, a bit lighter on the sun side, um, uh, which is that side, a little bit darker down this side. Um, for across the um, more yellow, across the fence, the, the brick wall, and then. Gently with stronger yellow, which turns a bit green when there's a touch of blue added. And we paint around, just before it dries, around the uh, sheep. And a bit more cadmium, which is the yellow. A little bit of ultramarine there, try and get some stronger greens, particularly as we come forward, because that's where the stronger greens will be. Paint around the sheep, leave those white, because uh, the um, sheep will be quite light on the outside edge. And then finally, a little bit of grey just in the distance there, and just a little bit of raw sienna, That's it. Oh, a nice bit of nice strong raw sienna coming through to the grey, and then a little bit of red, a bit of brown, to give that gravelly sort of path effect. Just before that completely dries, I'm going to put in a distant hill, trying to achieve a sense of depth at that point, and that goes off behind the tree. Okay. And just beyond that is a more blue piece of land goes off behind that tree, and then as we come down into the foreground, a little bit of yellow into that to give it a sort of a feel of a distant field that comes forward into that more foreground field, blurs away up into the distant hills. It's going to be a little bit darker with this um, this area here, a little bit lower perhaps. Sometimes on the top of these hills they get uh, quite dark where where they meet the sky. It's quite often the case. A bit of wooded area or whatever, whatever. Um, and that really 
is all we need to do for the first part of this lovely old barn picture. Now we have to be patient and allow that to dry. Well there is the close up version, uh, completely dry, which we must allow before we can overpaint. And uh, this is the sketch that I made a while ago um, that I'm working to. And as you can see, try to pick up a similar tone variation um, as the sketch itself. Um, dark sky at the top, light as it comes down to the horizon, dark again with the distant hill to the left lighter again for the building, um, trying to leave some highlights on the sheep, the barn opening and um, now I'll take you through the next stage. Okay, well now I'm going to move on to stage two um, of painting this um, lovely little subject. Um, I'm going to paint the two uh, the large tree and the smaller shrub either side just to balance the picture. I'm um, going to use that little palette and this um, number, what is it, number 10 brush. Um, quite an old brush, doesn't point particularly well. I'm going to use um, Prussian blue. It's always a good blue to use for trees and um, hedging. Um, trying to hold this up so as we can get a sense of how I mix the colours. So it's Prussian blue, plenty of Prussian blue. I'm going to use burnt umber, as you can see you get a nice green with that, and to freshen that green up, cadmium yellow. Now the green becomes nice and fresh. It is more of a summer scene, so we need quite a nice fresh green. <coughs> Remove some of the paint from the brush. I'm going to start in the sort of middle position. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to that. And I'm using the size of the brush. So initially, to keep it all nicely damp, leaving one or two little gaps. We do need some, some uh, gaps for, um, as a painter friend of mine used to say, for the birds to fly through. Um, and now I'm going right up the top, overhanging branches, quite a simple little process, painting trees, this, uh, a little bit lighter at the top, and as I move down, keep adding water, a bit more blue, a bit more, just to give it a bit more depth, a bit of brown now, just to give it a bit more of a late summer feel, see how much darker that uh, comes out once you add brown to the mix. Uh, it's quite a tall tree so it's going to go well out of picture. And as we come down to the barn, I'm going to pick around the top of that barn to create that uh, feeling of um, to create the shape of the barn itself. Right, now I'm going to go quite dark. Plenty of Prussian, plenty of burnt sienna, and now I'm going in the underside of those lighter areas. A little Prussian in there to really deepen the colour. And now this is going to be painted in very quickly, very loosely. Branches running out of picture, you must remember those. Burnt sienna, plenty of burnt sienna. The further I go down, the darker it gets behind the barn, it's going to be quite dark. And I'm going to leave a little bit of uneven touches on top of that, um, what will affect be, what in effect will be the hedge in the background. Well, now it's the start of the tree. I'm going to go really dark now in places. Well, remember, watercolour dries considerably lighter, so we must be dark enough 
particularly on the underside of these branches. While it's still damp, you get a lovely feeling of impression of branches. A bit darker at the top, don't want any too much light coming out the top. Um, and the underside of those branches, always very, very dark, and right in the heart of the back of that heart of the tree. A bit of light coming through. And we'll do the same to this side, but this side will in effect be in sunlight. So I'm going to use more yellow for this. So it's going to be slightly lighter, not too light. And this is going to be quite a simple process of painting across and down. There again, side of the brush. It's the outside edges that are more important than and that's how I'm spiking the outside edges trying to get that sense of light and I want a complete dome effect so I'm pulling some branches out there you go and there you've got a bit of balance to the subject a bit of burnt sienna now try and warm that up see there's a nice warm colour against the browns, the browns and the greens good combination, we'll do that this side too two little touches of browns within that green area all helps to give that sense of, um, of colour there you go and that is that now while I've got this dark colour I'm going to then paint the hedging that will shape up the back of the barn I'm going to leave some little touches on top of the hedging, little touches of white paper, just to denote where the hedge finishes and the tree begins. And I'm going to paint down to leave some spiky edges for the grasses. And then one real dark colour for the bottom half of that hedge. You can see now we're going to get a bit of tone on there. Um, you can really see how um, how lovely the um, uh, that mix is. You know. Um, now I'm going to add. Just clean the brush a little. I don't want the the grass to be too dark, so I'm going to use cadmium and yellow. Uh -huh. I'm going to sweep across the grass either side. Might have to get a bit of running from the tree. There we go. Just sweep across the grass, and there again, painting around the sheep, and just up into the undergrowth, nice and light around this area. There will be shadow, but uh, initially nice and light. Um, a little bit darker as I come around the sheep. I want the sheep to stand out in clear relief against the um, legs will be darker, heads will be dark. And now I'm just going to add some lovely lemon yellow. Well, it's still cadmium, but it's more of a lemony sort of yellow um, into the foreground. A little bit darker too um, as I come across the foreground because it's important that we get a um, lovely feeling of light. Can you see I'm still mixing from the same part of the um, palette? There you go. And run that over into the grass, out into the track area, and then. Finally, some lovely touches of earthy tone, which denotes really the bank, the way the bank turns up and goes up into the grass. And it tapers not quite so much this side, but there. Touches there. And uh, a little, the same three colours again. A bit of a dive in and get those lovely colours going. 
Okay, I've honed in a little closer this time, just so as you can see the more finer details. What I'm going to do now is job of hedging in the distance, ultramarine, mainly ultramarine, to get the very distant sort of feel of a hedge, the you know, old tree work uh, running down like that. It's only hinting, really. A uh, little bit um, less intense for a small area here, a perhaps wooded area, and that will also give a little edge to that um, field there. Um, then as I come forward, a touch of raw sienna in there, just to give more of a green feel. That denotes the trees a little bit nearer. That's a bit of hint at a bit of fencing, like that, or, and perhaps a bit more of a tree-like shape there. Not too much in the middle, so that denotes a bit of hedging. Um, okay, now the next real big thing is painting building. Now we're going to do that with ultramarine, raw sienna, and a touch of aluminium to give it a nice sort of a mellow grey. That's what I'm looking for. Not too dark, so enough water in the mix. And we obviously have a um, a ridge tile running across the top. That, so we leave a little bit of gapping. Other than that, um, we do have some gaps in the tiles there. And I want to show that where you can see the tree behind. Other than that, not too much light there. We paint down a typical Cotswold sort of stone um, colour that we'd see in the Cotswolds. A bit greeny grey perhaps. Then one or two little flecks of unpainted paper as so that green comes through. A bit more blue now as I head down, a bit more red. Gives me a bit of warmth to the lower part of that uh, area. Perhaps a touch more darker this side, darker at the top. I'm trying to get some varying tones um, within that and picking out where the tiles are missing on the roof. Okay, so that's that. We also have the un edges of the tiles coming down on the back edge there. Like that. So that shows that gable end. Um, the wall of the building, well, mainly raw sienna again. A touch of that other colour in there, a touch of it's a bit of that uh, red in there, just to get a bit more honey sort of feel to the colour, which I consider to be sort of the um, Cotswold stone sort of colour. A bit dark, a bit more water. It would be too dark with this at this stage, anyway. Could always go over again, but we're not. Um, intending to, leaving some gaps here and there, typical Cotswold sort of stone, and of course a bit more blue in, because this side will be the shadow side, um, whether I will need to darken that off one more tone, which I think I probably will um, at the end, but initially we'll call that the darker tone. Notice how I'm allowing the colour to run through um, and create a, a soft feel, you know. And then finally, the wall. Well, we do have some little 
touches of light on top of the wall. The wall is broken there. But other than that, you know how these sort of soldier stones stand up on on the wall? It's always nice to indicate that. And um, a bit lighter now as we come down. Because in effect, this wall is in shadow. So we need to show that. And that goes into that. I'm trying to keep the tones and, and correct so that we don't lose any uh, of the effect. And then inside the barn, how do we do the inside? Quite simply, we'll use raw sienna in this lower area. Maybe some, maybe some grasses in there or something for the sheep to um, to bed down. Um, but in the top right hand corner, the light is coming across, so it should hit into that. So top right hand corner, burnt sienna. Lovely dark opening. Now this is an opening, there's no door there. And because that's still damp, that will run into that. See the way it runs into that and creates uh, the illusion of something going on in the lower part of that barn without the need to create a um, full-blown image and also the door opening here and this is going to be quite dark too like that particularly the will be a little bit darker there too darker at the top lower in the bottom and I'm going to drag that color down now to create a lighter feel in the lower part quite cool that one quite light, just a bit light heading through, maybe a touch of yellow required the bottom there just to equal out everything but other than that, that really is the next stage um, just one more thing, may as well try and get it finished um, is the barn openings where the tiles are missing so all you do is fill in with a dark colour leaving the joist unpainted and that gives the impression that we have tiles missing on the roof. Obviously the green on that shows up behind because you can see through, here we don't uh, see through at all. Okay so that's the next stage of painting. OK, let's move on to um, the next stage of this lovely little subject. I'm going to quickly put in, um, use a smaller brush for this, um, finishing off the tree branches, burnt sienna, the trunk work, and burnt and ultramarine. Burnt sienna, ultramarine, and we'll take the trunk fairly wide the lower part of the tree so we'll bring that trunk area up quite dark in amongst the um, tree area there will be a branch possibly coming up there that's supporting um, the leafing above and as we move up um, maybe a branch coming off there that's another one supporting that out to there. Uh, or it may be one coming across. Something a bit larger, perhaps. Uh, the odd. Oh, perhaps the main trunk comes up there. Yeah, that'd be nice. Make that a little bit wider. Don't want too many. Um, you can always add, but you can't take away. That's my motto. Um, so, don't add too many of those um, areas of um, trunk work. They're a little bit darker in that lower part and where that trunk, trunk's come out there. Uh, other than that, that's 
probably all we need for the trunk work. Of that one. And let's put it a bit there to show that dark one coming off there. Um, then, of course, we've got the gate opening. It's quite important to use quite a warm brown for that. So we've got these old gate posts that are slightly laying in like that, very old age. Um, well, I suppose we could have a gate on there, couldn't we? So let's have some perspective on it, um, something like that. Remember the perspective when you're doing these sort of things. Um, five bars, one, two, three, four, five, with some cross sections like that. There's the old gate that's a bit on the ageing side. Good, so that's that. Now we're going to paint the sheet. Now we'll use raw sienna for the main body, leaving white colour, white paper at the top where the sun is really catching the fleece. Then I'm going to, on the undersides, just move a little bit, that's a little bit on the strong side, that's it. Then on the undersides, I'm going to use burnt sienna with a touch of ultramarine just to try and get the underbelly, a bit of depth of colour in the underbelly. And then plenty of ultramarine for the little black heads that these sheep have got. I'm just looking around there, the other one getting to head down towards the feed and the legs sort of step out like that, a little bit of a hook on that leg there, um, like that, a little bit of a tail perhaps, maybe, and that's all you need for sheep, I mean that's, it's quite Quite a simple process if you keep everything nice and um, nice and light and uh, fresh. Um, I'm going to put in the lintel stone running across the door, which is quite an important um, area, and one or two little side lintel stones that help support. You quite often see this on that. Cotswold stone building, one or two little other areas of stone that all make up the structure. Like that. Let's make one or two individual stones, slightly different shade and shape. Some a little bit lighter, some a little bit darker, a little bit on that gable end as well. There you go. So that's that. Hmm, well, we're sort of getting there, really, you know. Um, before I put my shadows in, just going to go in with some really dark colour. So it's ultramarine, sorry, it's burnt sienna with Prussian blue. Give me a very dark brown green. And this will sharpen up the corner of this, give ourselves a sense of shadow on a little bush there. Going to sharpen down the side of this area here too. So quite dark in the lower area of that. And around this sort of area, just one or two little dark touches that make all the difference when you're trying create the illusion of light. See you know, how it's, it's actually helped the illusion of, of light, particularly on the underside of that tree and along the edge, the spiky areas, that's where the grasses stand up, or a little bit of shadow work on the soldier bricks that stand up. We use that same colour, not really worried too much. In actual fact, this would benefit by coming up a little bit higher than that, a little bit further out. There we go. And then finally, we will lay on the shadow work. 
use a slightly larger brush for this. I'm going to use Ultramarine and Vermilion. That's my shadow colour, nice purpley blue sort of mix. Where will the shadows be? Well, um, on the overhang of that door opening. Just go a little bit darker with that. Because, you know, it can be too dark, but it's nice to have a bit of strength of colour. There we go. And we're going to go down the width of the brickwork, that side. Um, a little bit more Imaginary trees out of picture, a bit of light there coming across, and a little bit of light finally onto the track. A bit of red in with the green, just to give it some sense of light. Perhaps there again, tree out of picture, casting a shadow across this foreground. A little bit stronger than that, perhaps. There has to be a bit of depth to these foreground shadows, just to give it a sense of light. Just a little bit attached to that. Um, a little bit from the wall, a bit under the gate. And bring that green one up the bank. Down the bank that side. And notice so quickly I'm painting this. Always a good thing to do. And introduce the green into the track. That now needs well, just just let me just quickly finish. Don't like that light there. Let's just 
get rid of that light edge. There we go. And get rid of that light edge. It is light, but not not completely white. And um, we will call that a day. There's just one other thing that we need to do, but we need to allow that to dry first. Okay, well, as you can see, I've finally removed the outer um, tape, and that clarifies the edges and creates um, basically a mount really so um, um, now I can just finish off any fine details that is re that, that are required um, not a great deal but I'm going to use quite a the fine brush again and um, one or two little edges just need sharpening up um, but we've got to watch we don't overdo this got to use ultramarine again with a touch of burnt sienna and this makes virtually a black, well it's not a black, it's very dark and that will just put down that dable end there we're going to line the tire work or slate, the old Cotswold slate um, as it finishes there is a, a obviously a thickness to that Cotswold slate uh, and also down this side it's obviously overlaying so we've got to show quite a jagged edge there is shadow there and there underneath there and there so it shows you the thickness of the tiles themselves you would see it that side uh, you wouldn't uh, yes you would see it under there and also the right hand side of these supports, cross sections uh, and of course the underside of those um, which they would carry through like that so that just helps to sharpen up the feel of um, a bit of um, um, support there for the uh, tiles and just a little bit there on the underside of that across there see how it sharpens up the, the sense that you can see through the roof at that point there will be um, I might as well just show a little bit of ridge tile there like that it's just you know, have to be careful when you start lining you know you're only suggesting um, you're far from producing um, every single a slate in the roof. If you try and do that, then before you know it, um, you've got a lot of work on your hands, which is quite unnecessary, really. Um, lintel may stand out a tad like that, um, may have a little bit of stone work there, a little bit of stone work there, perhaps there again the underside of that a uh, little bit of stone work to show perhaps don't forget the perspective a little bit of perspective there running through um, so that's pretty much there um, just have to be a little careful that you don't overdo this one or two little touches I don't know where there's shading for the grasses perhaps just watch we don't overdo that one or two little sort of spiky areas that's a dark couple of grass particularly in the shadow area and particularly down that left hand side there a little bit there where the light is coming round but there the cuffs there and let's just sharpen up these shadow areas on the brickwork or stonework this is just the sense of the stonework there. A little bit shadows on the soldier stones again. Uh, one or two little touches. Um, you know, it's, it's how far do you go with this? Well, um, not too far. Um, you have to be very careful that, um, that you actually um, um, don't overdo this. It's, it's so easy. The times I've overdone this 
these little touches and I always tell myself you know let's just take it a small stage at a time sit back and have a look and see what you've achieved try not to allow that to um, any area to really dominate you know um, and we're, we're pretty much there I think I think that's give it you know the whole sense the feeling of a Cotswold stone um, building uh, in the Cotswolds um, and of course we mustn't forget to sign it so I'm going to use it we'll sign it in the same paint as I actually used because that makes it a bit more authentic um, uh, for future um, buyers um, and that is more or less all we can do we need birds in the sky but uh, let's, let's just go with a couple shall we just show you how to put a few birds in the sky um, one there one there and obviously they get smaller if they go away into the distance which um, and they can almost just be blobs in the end and that I think just about sums up um, the way I would treat um, that type of subject um, nice simple subject treated in a, um, a simple manner um, paint is applied onto the paper um, in a loose and fresh way there's no overworking um, I attended to the sky a little covering of colour in the foreground then I went back and done the um, distance then as I worked forward I did the trees either side trying to balance it while I was actually working then I concentrated on the barn, the sheep, the shadow work um, and that's the way you produce that um, type of subject and I'm just going to turn the camera around and just show you the, the materials that I actually use and to be fair um, it's not a great deal of materials um, it really isn't you know um, that is the subject that I worked from uh, a lovely um, image of the uh, of the scene in pencil and that is the materials quite simply no nothing much you know uh, a, a water tray uh, four brushes a small palette to mix with um, and um, that really produces this very nice um, very um, rewarding little subject so I hope you've enjoyed the video um, I do intend to produce more in the future uh, but in the meantime uh, you have a go you get those brushes out and uh, perhaps even have a go at painting this particular scene bye for now